How's it going guys? Welcome to the Diamond Map channel. If you're new to me, thank you very much for clicking on this video. I was a professional jeweller, award-winning, travelled internationally, representing Great Britain, featured in Goldsmiths Review magazine <coughs> 20 years ago. <coughs> uh, but now I'm living in Japan and I'm keeping my skills alive because I'm not an employed jeweller anymore, but I'm keeping my skills alive, putting them to good use and documenting everything I learned over my career by making jewelry making instructional videos so everyone can benefit from all the hard work I've put in and um, yeah so that's that. I'm really tired this is gonna be a weird video I'm sorry. Let me say thank you to some patrons and members. I didn't get any for a couple of weeks and then I got a load all over like one weekend it happens like that sometimes. Uh, so we've got Chris Border, Matthias Schmidt, John Morales, El Okamoto, Arigato, Okamoto-san, Anthony Pietrofessa, like, I'm very grateful to all of you guys, but I'm not going to pronounce your names correctly. I apologise in advance. Craig Koerling, Therese Levin, Luindas Skrtlakes, Diana Hill, Elizabeth Hernandez, Robert Mara, and I'm just Chris. Me too. I'm Chris too. Welcome. Uh, yeah, these are all patrons and members, yeah? I want to say their names on the beginning of the video, so... Uh, just out of appreciation, I want everyone to hear their names because they put money down to support me and grow this channel. It really, really does help me and uh, encourages me as well because obviously people give me money. I've got to work hard. I've got. Uh, I'm now in service to you because I accepted your money. So yeah, let's let's do some stuff and create value for everyone. Right, let's go on with the video today. I want to talk about five claw collets. I really like the idea of five claw collets, but no one makes them. No one makes them. They don't exist in the jewelry trade. The only way you'll get one is uh, to go to a jeweler, someone like I used to be, and then ask for one to be custom made for you, like bespoke. Uh, you can't buy them, and I think for a, like an earring stud, uh, it's ideal, like six claws, too much metal around the stone. Four claw creates an illusion, of makes a round stone, can give it an illusion of being square. Five claw eliminates that. I, I think five claw is really nice. It should be used more in the jewelry trade. I just Googled circle divided by five and I got this shape immediately so it's easy to find. Uh, this is a familiar thing if you look at aloe wheels on cars, very common five spoke. Uh, in jewellery doesn't happen a lot and I gotta understand why because if you put, say this is a, a collet in a ring with your claws in those positions, you can't really put a shank across it nicely because one side's going to join to a claw and the other one is going to be opposite. And look how awkward that looks now all of a sudden. <laughs> um, rings, difficult but as an earring, I think it's ideal having just five there, nicely spaced out. Draws your eye will continue a circle. Like I was saying, if you've got a, a position, claws in positions. <laughs> wow, my brain today. If you've got four claw, it creates the illusion of it being square. So um, four's not ideal. Six is almost too bitty, a bit too busy design. There's too much going on around it. Uh, I think five's nice for a single stone diamond stud. So as always work into a stone, I've got this one carat thingy. I will now bend some metal to turn up a collet. Regular viewers or just people with a bit of jewellery making experience will know about this. Uh, half round pliers, rounded section, the nearest you, hold it securely against your peg. Parallel pliers, tweak it towards you. Move it along, tweak it up. Move it along, tweak it up. Move it along, tweak it up. Try and move it the same amount and tweak it the same amount. You should end up with a kind of reasonably even curve. Another perfect, but uh, just helps you out having less tidying up to do afterwards. Can be prone to doing that kinking. See that? This is quite deep for how thick it is. It's a little bit too thin, but saves me having to do a melt up and make some more metal on this. So I'm going to battle on with this bit of metal, um, but it's going to kink on me. I'm just continuing with this. And I thought to say, if you've got these pliers and you're trying this for the first time, what I've done with mine, I've cut a groove, both sides. I used to have just one on the rounded side for years, but then I put, added that one. It helps a lot. Just helps it stop doing that kink thing. but can still be prone to happening. Also, I bend it from one side and then I need it a bit longer. I, I will start from the other side. I just find it easier to work the metal like this. 
And obviously you only need enough to go around that stone, so I think I've got plenty here. Speaking for myself, might be different for other jewellers. I find my end bit is always a bit straight there, so when I'm curving it up, when I'm sort of checking it, I will just hide that with my finger and then that sort of distance I need, more than I need, should be a nice curve. I think it's straightening out a bit there. But th this is enough, I'm gonna be all right using that section of it. Then just curve it up, use half rounds, smaller set of half rounds, all these are quite good for this sort of work. curve on it. I check my stone reasonably early on just so I get an idea if I'm curving it too much or not enough. So I've turned mine up quite badly just to get my stone above it to see what kind of size I want it to be. I want my stone to sit sort of just down in it a little bit. Um, but I've got to punch it out in here anyway so the next step is using a collet punch and you may find you make it you think really accurately but then forcing it into one of these cone shapes changes it so much you end up having to sort of cut it and shape it a little bit to get it right for your stone. It's a bit difficult to know what to make and then how it's going to be affected in one of these holes. And I'm banging it down. And then I'm banging it out. Keep an eye on your solder joint. I'll tell you what I didn't do. You should, um, if you've got a bit of a lumpy solder joint, get rid of any sort of lumps on your solder because that can affect how this thing fits in the in the punch. So all that rainbow shaping malarkey, that's so we can get it in here without it splitting. If you put it through straight, if you just wrap it up straight and then put it in here, it's almost definitely going to split open. So you've got to give it a bit of a head start by making it slightly cone shape to begin with. So uh, this needs more, more banging. It's nice if you can get it in there and the sides are all shiny all the way around, top to bottom. That means it's hit the sides inside that so it's the perfect shape. You want you want the metal to follow the sides as much as possible. So like I mentioned it's difficult to gauge what you're what you're making exactly and then how it's gonna affect hitting it in there. You, you can get your stone and line it above the correct one so you know you can make your metal for that specific for that one. Gives you a bit of a head start on what to do. But even so it's stretched out more than I thought that so my stone is dropping right in there. Uh, it's a little bit look bit a little bit too low. Uh, it's coming a bit close to the bottom because that bottom's gonna have to be flattened as well. So to make end up with a nice collet where the stone's not sticking out the bottom, it's pushing my luck a little bit, that dropping down so much. So I'm going to cut through my solder joint, cut a slice out, maybe about a mil, mil and a half, maybe even two mil, and then yeah, join it back up and do the game, do it again. And then hopefully that stone sitting in the same, hammer it down in the same socket, and then that stone should sit slightly higher in the metal. So I took out about it was more like a mil and a half I took out and I hammered it down so it stretched out a touch more just by rounding off again and it's still a touch big so I think I was right when I said two mil might have been better just a little bit more but anyway it's usable and I've got a file the top and bottom down yet so it might work out fine anyway I was just thinking I need to flatten the top and the bottom and there was a comment from someone on my video I did the 8 claw rex which we're making the same sort of way really uh, he said I was talking about it being difficult to file the top and bottom keep it parallel because you've got a cone shape and then you file like the top slightly weird angle really ruins it uh, he came up with a good suggestion of just leaving it in there and then filing it when it's actually in there and that helps you get one side really parallel um, it's not ideal like this one it's not sitting down enough in that one, it's too small, and then drops right down in that one. So I've got enough in to file it and keep it dead, dead straight to the surface. So I could file it on that one, but it's still using my eye. And also, it didn't work that well when I, I did try it before with the patrons in an exclusive video for them. Um, it just spins around a lot when it's in there. So it's sort of something to keep in mind, but it's not perfect by any means. Uh, anyway, we're gonna <laughs> say all that. I'm gonna file the top and bottom flat. There's an element of just needing practice when you're trying new techniques. So you're comparing something new to something you've done loads of times over the years. Might actually be better with a bit of practice, but first time we try it, you think it's not as good. I don't really care that much about the bottom half of this collar, to be honest. I just want to get these claws cut out so I can put a stone in there and then we can look at it and go, ooh, yeah, <laughs> five claws. <laughs> 
I'm saying a five claws is awkward to put a shank on, but I reckon for a three stone, it might work out all right. Like you could have five stones on the side, uh, so you've got a claw lining up with a shank, both sides, and then like a six or something in the middle. I'm not really sure. Uh, but yeah, two five stones, something in the middle. I think potential to work quite well. But however you go about making your collet, definitely put it on a metal block and look at it from the side and rotate it. Okay, so using this printout to give me a guide for marking my claws out. Uh, it's quite nice if you have a compass somewhere. I don't have one. Uh, but basically, you know, like a compass, which is essentially just a pair of dividers, but with a pencil hole on one side. Put that in the middle, draw some circles around it, different distances. I did it with a six. There it is, on my pinboard. There you go. I've done this before with my six claw. Using exactly the same thing, look. Um, yeah, tr draw circles. And what, what it happens is those circles just help you line things up nicely and keep it directly in the middle because you can also see the parallel line around the outside of your collet compared to the ones you drew. So all I'm going to do is check that works, which it does. Line this up in the middle. And then, um, oh, my solder join. I want to cut my solder join out. I don't want my solder join to be a claw. So solder join will go in between. Looking directly down on it. Again, if you worked accurately and your cone is nice and symmetrical all the way around and central, this will help you out. Dot there. I tried to do these quite well, but you are going to be filing and cutting and stuff as well. I'm not going to take my finger off because it will stick to my finger and move. Okay. So there you go. Look, I've got. So now I've got five points equally marked out. I'll draw a straight line up to the centre. Um, I just saw this on my shelf. Every time I go to a hardware store, yeah, I'm looking at other tools for completely different jobs, nothing to do with jewellery, and seeing what might be useful for me. I've got these little star, whatever they are, <laughs> hex, I don't know what you call them, like hex bits, I don't know. Uh, anyway, this might help me mark out a six claw in the future. I can just punch that inside a collet, and then it'll mark, mark out where claws need to go. And there's different sizes there. So this might be useful, I don't know. It was cheap enough to buy and not worry about it. Uh, so anyway, let's get on with this one. I will get these claws marked out properly. So I trust I did these accurately. I'm just going to draw lines straight up. These are my claws. Yeah, something about five marking out five positions equally around a circle. Really difficult to do just by your own eye. I hope this video is flowing nicely. <laughs> I don't feel very confident about it. Um, so I've marked my claws out, got those, transferred it to the top, just carefully put a dot on the top. Uh, now we're going to cut the claws out. We need a bit of length, need a nice long bit of claw, and then it turns out. So I'm just going to mark the bottom of my dividers all the way around, maybe around there perhaps. So go around it with your dividers. Right, this is not going to be a finished piece of jewellery so perhaps I'm not going to work as carefully as normal but just by eye I'm going to put a dot in between my two claws on the top half of that line looking at it from this angle. Why am I pen working? So uh, yeah, I want my claws to be a little pointed, sort of V like that. I'll do it all the way around. And that'll be my guide for cutting them out. Okay, drawing this on that. So I'm looking directly down on it, rotating it. Because I know the guide is like mathematically very, very good. Uh, doesn't mean your drawings are, so I'm just looking at it 
kind of thickening up the lines, where I feel like the space is a bit bigger one side than the other. I'm just sort of moving my claws about a little bit. So I'm just checking over it, make sure I like it, and if there's a, yeah, this space is bigger than that one. That line is thin, so that helps me, I'm just thickening up the line a little bit. Just small little adjustments really affect it quite a lot. So let's chop it out. So obviously the uh, black dots are the tops of your claws. You don't want to be hitting those. So what I do is I start off by putting a cut either side of it. And then I'm starting correct. Or at least one side of it and not right up to it either. Save, save that sort of precision work for the next step. You're working with your paper discs and needle files and all that. Don't do that. <laughs> what I just did. Some clever people use like pin vices or you know these things you can put the screw and let me try it I haven't done it before so you can hold on to these collets with these little screw down mandrel vice so it is essentially a little vice in it let's try this out I've seen it done I like the look of it but I've never tried it so I can hold that in there Nah, it's stupid, I can't get my saw blade down there, because the screw's in the way. Let me just try it. <laughs> There's one that's in there. Uh, where was I? Doing this one. Well, it's a lot easier to hold on to, I'll give you that, but that screw is in the middle and it's right in the way. I might be able to work around it. Some clever angle work. So what I want to do anyway is cut straight down. I want a straight section of claw. There's no point starting curving off because then stone's not really going to set very nicely. You want a bit of a vertical claw and then going in. I don't like this at all. <laughs> nah, I don't like it. <laughs> but basically, some people do tricks like that to hold on to it. I, I just, I've always done it, I just hold on to it in the most uncomfortable way. I just kind of squeeze it my fingers, it's a bit painful, but I get it done. Maybe using a more fine tooth saw blade, it might be less grippy, less catchy on it. So it's not pulling about on your fingers so much when you're cutting into it. I'm just going to go around it doing these vertical ones. I mean, you could do one at a time if you wanted, but I just feel like doing this. I'd recommend cut them out, leave them a little bit on the thick side, and then you've got space to like, file them up. Get them, get them nice and neat without going, worrying about going too thin. You might want to adjust the distances between them as well, and you can only really do that by making one either side of the space a bit thinner <laughs> on one side of it. Extra, extra thickness is useful. Alright, so there we go. See that? So now I'm going to go around it, chopping them out. Thumb, nice dent there, <laughs> quite painful. This is where it gets really painful because you have to hold onto it the same and squeeze it onto sharp claws because as you cut them out, it gets very uncomfortable to hold onto. Cutting, start cutting. Keep moving the saw and you change the direction. You can't just twist the blade and then start sawing. You need to sort of line it up with the hole you've already got, then start moving it, and then you can turn it. Again, not really worrying about being too accurate. I'm just cutting out the basic shape. I'll leave that accuracy for rubber wheels, paper discs, needle files, and all that. I mean, looking at that now, there's so much space in between the claws. I think it's going to make it difficult for myself trying to go to a nice little sharp V in the middle. So I'm just going to use a round needle file. 
just to just to sort of finish off the bottom. I leave the sides of the claws until last. They're all scratchy and like file, sorry, saw saw marks. I just leave them as they are. Just get this done now. So what I did is I went round it, freshened up my dividers line again. my round needle file to tidy up that bottom bit. Bug phrases are really good for this kind of work and I haven't got any like nice fresh ones I've just got a few sort of big size ones and they're really old they're literally years old. I think I had these from the place I worked before I even moved to London. Yeah really worn out but they're sort of useful sometimes. That was too big. I have got this though, what I call a flame phrase, it's like a little flame shape. That's a bit more like what I want, so I'm gonna go around it. I mean actually, I mean it's so big, I'm gonna round it. And the ball ball burr will work quite well in there. You know, just use what you got in it. Experiment with your tools, have a look what you got, decide what you think's gonna work best. Give it a whiz. I've been around it with the burrs, it looks much nicer. But I'm just getting it kind of a bit nicer with a needle file. Just a couple of little edges where my burr wasn't quite as wide as the bottom of it, as it needed to be. So I'm kind of just evening them all up with the needle file. The angle as well, a bit different or something. straight down on it, looking at the gaps, rotate it around, this one looks thinner, thinner than that one and that gap looks narrower, narrower than the one next to it so perfect, I'll just thin this claw off a little bit from this side. Look at what I'm doing as I'm doing it as well. Ideally these claws are vertical, like parallel and vertical. Sometimes it's a good idea to just buff the top of your claws gently because if you've got like scratches and black lines on there you might be getting some little illusions stopping you seeing the difference of distances between the claws and stuff. So it's just when everything's clean it's just a bit more easy to see what's going on. So now that this is taking shape I'm starting to sort of pre appreciate the design a bit more. It's um, I'm neatened up the claws and sort of liking the look of it a lot more now. So. Being careful with it, I'm going to try and put little cuts up level with the claws and then I'm going to file into it so we get this kind of nice effect around the sides. Just like a Rex claw, check out my Rex claw video. I think this is much nicer than my 8 claw Rex. I did say in that video, I hate 8 claw Rexes, I think they're really old fashioned. You can do them a bit more like what I did in that video, modernising them a little bit, but I just don't like them. This I'm preferring the look of. So obviously it's more difficult than the Rex, I can't just cut straight across, I've got to do each single claw individually. Um, I'm just going on, I'm just lining up down the middle of the claw, that's all I can do now, I can't really move it around too much, because the point of this cut coming up from the bottom has got to line up in the middle of the claw. So I'm just going to start it with my three square, because obviously it's going to cut a narrower groove in it. Uh, square one. I'm not going to do it without bending the claws about to hold it in the air. So I went round them, I did my cuts, lined up the claws, then I took a look from a distance, just made sure I like how they're all spacing out with each other. I'm reasonably happy with it, so just a case of filing up the same line. Uh, just got to be careful not to hit the opposite side. So it's just a case of filing straight up the saw cut. The saw cuts were nicely lined up with the middle of the claws, so I haven't really got to think at all at the moment, just filing. The only thing I'm being careful of is not hitting the side nearest me. Can't lay the needle file too flat. 
Right, this is far from finished. I'm only showing you because my fingers are always in the way and it's camera set at a distance. So this is my work so far. And uh, looking at this side, it's taking shape quite nicely. I think it's quite pleasing to the eye to see five spokes and little facets and stuff work appearing on it. It's quite a nice thing. So I'm gonna file it a bit more. I can envisage myself bringing these center bits down more to a V just to match what's going on here. I don't really like the idea of this being round. Uh, it's nice if that sort of touches at more of a point and then this comes down into a V. Uh, what shall I do? Maybe I'll put, this is just my tri-square file, yeah, so I move to my square one. That's gonna spread that cut out a little bit. Uh, I think that's gonna make it look better. And then we'll see see if I wanna do something about this, this curvature. Yeah, so looking at that, I'm gonna just put a little bit of a deeper middle section. I'm gonna do it gently with this oval needle file. I don't use this very often, but at this circumstance it might be useful. I can just carefully put a little V at the bottom and then I think, I don't know, maybe lay it on the side. I was gonna say, I just tidy up my rubber wheel, but See how that's starting out, just putting a little point at the bottom of it and then trying to spread it out a bit deeper. So ready for rubber wheeling. I've been around it, filed it up reasonably accurately, getting them all the same. You can see it's a bit sort of jolty, my angles. Not worried about it too much, my rubber wheel's gonna smooth that out and I'm probably gonna be rubber wheeling inside there a little bit as well, just, just to kind of round that off. Maybe this is more noticeable by eye so let's get this nice and neat, get them all the same, and then match, match this shape to that. This is the main thing, isn't it? Oh, oh, having the uh, stone in there. So I quite like that. Like I said earlier, the four claws can make things look a bit square. Six claws is like too bitty, too much going on, too much metal pushed over the top. I think that's a nice in-between. Looks like a circle, not too much metal, nice big open gaps on the side. I think five claws have potential. Maybe all jewelers start working on five claws, we'll come up with a new design and uh, a new bit of design direction for jewelry, bring in odd number claw collets. So if you're new to the channel, I talk about rubber discs a lot. Uh, I call them rubber wheels, it's probably a bad thing. It is more of a rubber disc. And uh, it's actually like a, it's more plasticky than rubber and it's infused with abrasive bits. So it cuts really well. You can sharpen them like a blade, or any kind of stone, like sharpening stone. Get them really sharp. And they're really effective for shaping edges of metal, really. I mean, it hasn't got to be blade sharp, it almost benefit rounding it off a little bit, so to get this really nice. Get rid of file marks, paper and marks, just neaten up, flatten surfaces. And you get things to a finish where they can be polished, so it's good for working fast and getting things nice. I'm actually going to blunt that a little bit on purpose. So it's not so severe. So I've done those. I'm sharpen this back up. Sharpen this back up and then just zing in these bits. Get these nice. Do it looking from the side so they're really nicely lined up down the middle of the claw. There's an element of if you haven't cleaned it up perfectly, you can get away with it because polishing will 
sort of round it off a little bit. So the sharp edge might not be perfect, but with just the gentle bit of rounding off that you get from using bristle brushes and stuff, can hide slightly dodgy lines, but at the same time, try and make it accurately in the first place. I made a mini buff stick look cute. A little cute Japanese one. <laughs> putting the stone back in it, picking it up. What do you think it might be as a ring? It's not It's not too offensive having one claw going across the shank and then two that way. Maybe it'd work if you have sort of two together, one that side, one slightly smaller that way or something. Uh, if you had two going back to back with the two claws hitting each other, so you've got one on the outside. Don't know if that's a good idea or not. Um, I want to. I'm kind of intrigued with with it. I want to see what's possible. Uh, like I'm thinking, maybe uh, like a three stone ring, like I mentioned before. We got six claws or something in the centre, and then this, the five claws on the outside, and then you can have the shank joining up to the one claw, obviously, and the two go into the centre. Maybe six claw will work out nicely. One, mm. Don't know. Yeah, I'm going to experiment with it. I'm kind of intrigued with what what's possible with it because it's not something that gets done a lot in the jewelry trade, and it's not, sort of nothing wrong with it. So um, five spoke design in a circle happens all the time on car alloy wheel design. So if you need some inspiration for making collets, is this the one? One of these two magazines has got loads of alloy wheels in it. This video taking a bit of a change or what? Japanese custom cars. No, it's not this one. They're cool. It's not a magazine, it's this one. By the way, you might be thinking Japanese custom cars, yeah, are all like Fast and Furious, like Larry Graphics and Toyota Supras and all that. But no, like 90, 95% of them are like this, like just luxury cruiser Lexus is really low on very expensive looking alloys. It's what most cars are like out here. This is the page I was thinking of. That's not even five spokes now, is it? Yeah, nothing really you can work with. Obviously I'm not imagining making something really like intricate and complicated, but just things like that. It's a bit of a twist on them, I really like those. It's not just five spoke, they sort of go out and like that. You can maybe, I don't know, work with that something, all these kind of Y shapes coming out. Like five claws, but then splitting off at the top, so you've got 10 on top, that's quite cool. Oh, I don't know, just wherever. Just take inspiration from wherever you can get it with your designs. Yeah. So I'm leaving it there for this video. This video was just about creating the collet. I'm not doing anything with it at this time. Uh, I just wanted to, like, I, I can envisage it, but I just wanted to have it in my hand, so I'm holding it. And now I've got it in my hand, it's easier for me to envisage it. The next stage, like I'm imagining different collets next to it, six claws, four claws, another five claw, whatever. Uh, seeing how it work as a three stone on a ring. As a pendant, I think that works really well, because it's essentially a circle with five points marked out around it which we've seen loads of times, like a pentagon, and like I said, like alloy wheels on cars and stuff, happens all the time. Uh, starfish. <laughs> um, nothing unusual about it, but it is slightly odd for jewellery. Like, for some reason, it doesn't happen much in the jewellery trade. But there's nothing wrong with it, so I think it works quite nicely. As a single stone, especially, like a pendant or earrings, works really well. Five points marked out around a circle, keeps it looking circular. Four claws squares things off. Six claws can look a bit too much metal going on, unnecessarily. Also, compared to a six claw, five claw has more space in between the claws, so it's more open looking from the side, shows off the stone more. And essentially, that's what we're doing. We are, if you're a diamond mounter, you are just doing the metal work to show off gemstones, that's, that's all it is. Uh, but yeah, I like it, it's got a lot of potential, so give it some thought. If you're hand making jewelry, please have a go yourself. And that way, if you're, if you're actually making things, um, like especially things that are a little bit unusual, like five claws, you are not only participating in making jewellery, you're someone actually 
moving it forward, like moving the design forward, like changing direction, goes into new avenues. Um, and that's a good thing. That's what I want. That's what I want with this channel. I want to encourage you to do new things. So I'm just teaching the foundations, the basics of making stuff, and then off you go. Like I hope you become famous and become rich. Please remember me. <laughs> like quote my name. I would love that in the future if someone become famous, world-renowned jeweler, designer, fashionista, and uh, they quote my name as someone who inspired them and got them on the on the path to to, to be there. So that'd be great. Um, I definitely recommend having a printout like this because although you can do it by eye, it's difficult, at least if you start off with a computer generated, perfectly mathematical circle divided up into five, you've got like the best starting point and you work from that and just try and keep that as you progress through the job. Um, but yeah, basically that's it. So thanks for watching. If you haven't done so already, please click like and subscribe, notification bell so you're notified of new videos. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I hope you join me again on the next one. See you later. Bye.